if we educated our physicians, nurse practitioners, PAs, you know, through guidelines, through uh, ASCD risk score, or if we had health coaching program, or if we did a medication bundle, and also we did technology wireless monitoring, and we identified the right patients, will we be able to reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease and stroke further in San Diego? So that was that's the basic frame, uh, you know, that's the outline of the program, and these are the nine healthcare systems which are now participating in the San Diego Collaborative, uh, all the way from UC Sharp, Scripps, North County. And Kaiser is also an active, uh, you know, they don't have patients who are participating, but they do provide a lot of guidance, and Dr. Darrell and Brian are active members of our executive committee. So uh, these are all the areas which we are covering. As you can see, it's all spread over uh, uh, San Diego, so we have a pretty good catchment. Uh, our population and you know various demographics from inland side to coastal so I think we'll see how that all plays out so I think when we look at uh, our criteria, uh, the way we you know these are our enrollment criteria we have uh, tried to limit to a certain age group blood pressures and cholesterol we are also looking at ASCD, ASCD risk score but like Dr. Kaplan said, you know, I think I'm glad that you know we are not just focusing on the risk, score, we are also looking at people with high blood pressure as one of the primary uh, driver uh, enrollment criteria. So so far, uh, we have almost enrolled uh, 30, 3, uh, 3,800 patients. Uh, out of the 4,000, our goal is 4,000. So we hope by December we should be have enrolled 4,000. You know, almost 95 percent of enrollment has been done which is very impressive work because we had, you know, as you know, these grants sometimes, they, by the time you get them, they're six months behind, and we were able to enroll within um, a year. So uh, kudos to all of the healthcare teams. And on your, uh, on your side, you can see the ethnicity. Um, one of the challenges, I think, is we try to get more African-Americans uh, enrolled in this study because, in my mind, I thought we, that that's a population where we can show the most impact. We did enroll some around 200, but not as many as I would have hoped for. Uh, females more, males, uh, you know, females are more than males, and you can see uh, the, the insurance criteria that most of our population is vulnerable. These are the sickest of the sickest: Medicare, Medical, Medicare Advantage population. Uh, when you look at the criteria, uh, majority of people are falling into either high blood pressure or high lipids, uh, not just the ASCD risk score. And then there are some people who have everything but the, only the risk score is the highest thing. So that's the spread of our uh, enrollees in the program. So the interventions which we are doing are things like medication bundle. Um, these are different medication bundle. Um, Ryan spoke about it, but things like uh, Aspirin, lipid lowering, diuretic. Based on your underlying condition, you know people can be, start, you know, given a one or more, a other bundle of medication. And then we have also been deploying wireless technology. So by a wireless cuff, uh, there are, we also are giving standard cuffs, but we also have some smart uh, wireless pill bottles, which we have been to, uh, giving out to see if patients are really taking those medications. And then for just to, if they're not taking those, you know, if they don't open the cap, it will turn red, it will turn green, it will flash, it will send you a text message. And even if you still don't take in the night, the lid will flip open and smack them. <laughs> <laughs> still have to take the medication. But those are some of the examples we are looking at uh, in this. We have built uh, online resources through various things. Um, you know, Dr. Dell did a YouTube clip on why uh, you should be on medication bundle and what's the, you know, some of the uh, you know, learnings which we have had, we have on the website. But also, uh, a lot of time, you know, our lot of energy has focused on getting health coaches, uh, you know, how the health coach is a big thing and it's easy to say let's have health coaches, but you know, who qualifies as a health coach, what should be their training requirement, what's their, how they integrate with their team, what's their the workflows we have spent. Uh, a lot of time with uh, nine healthcare systems on different kinds of health coach workflows. In this regard, we have you know pulled in a lot of resources from all the national and statewide initiatives, uh, best practices, and sort of built a library of resources for our health coaches and our physicians to use. 
Uh, we have built this, uh, you know, we did a lot of in-person training for our health coaches. Uh, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, Legacy is one of our partners with whom we have uh, run various training sessions and really get it, you know, we think that these are the people who really get things uh, done. So just to share uh, some of, uh, one example of where we are, we are still, you know, early in showing uh, some outcomes, but here you can see uh, when we started, uh, what was uh, the percentage of patients who were adherent to their medications, where they were and where they are now. So you can see um, uh, almost close to 4,000 patients where, you know, when they said how much, uh, what they were taking and how much where they are right now. So this is, we hope that, you know, our, one of our goal is to have 80% of patients have medication adherence, so we are seeing that. Um, we know internally that we are also seeing an improvement in blood pressure control. Now, mind, you know, these are patients who are uncontrolled. These are sickest of the sickest people who are on the PAM tool. You know, that we are deploying PAM tool uh, would be on the lower end, you know, of the PAM activation. So we have this PAM going, assessments going, uh, medication grants. We do monthly calls with our meetings. And so far, all of them have stuck together. You know, we, we just had a great session last uh, few weeks back, and everyone was there. So these are the things we are tracking, you know, can we really look at reducing cardiovascular risk, can we reduce heart attack and stroke and all these uh, parameters we are trying to do. And most important is, are we really saving money? Are we saving money for CMR? And I'll just digress a little bit, but just want to share in support of your findings. Uh, at Sharp Ristilli, uh, we just got a report from CMS for Medicare fee for service on value-based modifier. And there are two good things, you know. One, we got in 2016 the report for 2015, so that was big thing, you know. Getting in one year is. But the second is that it showed that you know our for sharp still Medicare fee for service uh, in 2015 our uh, reduction in myocardial infarction and P and PGCA was 20 percent less than the national benchmark. So I think that you know so. Doctor Shortill questions your data, you can come <laughs> <laughs> So, but I think uh, in a way that's a good thing. But I think the secret sauce, you know, the secret sauce of all of this is the health coaches. You know, I think the health coaches do so much of work, and uh, I think uh, you know, as we go forward, I hope the health plans and the different payers and uh, employers consider the you know important role of various members of the care team. And I think this is something which we need to build uh, for really a sustainable model. Now, as we phase out of the grant in the next one year, we are looking into sustainability and we have deployment, things like texting program, but also looking at the financial implications of how these coaches can be part of the system. And I'm glad to report that almost eight out of nine systems are reporting that they're going to keep in some fashion this health coaches as part of the team in the coming year. So I think we are going to really have because we need more people to talk about health promotion. We need people to talk about diet and exercise and all the time, every place we can talk about. So with that in mind, I'm going to share with you a clip. Uh, this is from CDC. You might have seen it. But just... Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes. More exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising it. It just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon too. And who really likes to exercise? <laughs> Me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> so uh, I hope you enjoyed that. But I think you know San Diego is doing some great work thanks to a lot of uh, healthcare leaders who are in this room and we hope that uh, you can come and you know anytime uh, you know things which we are we are happy to share we are happy to share our learnings come and visit us in San Diego we in, you know we have a beautiful location where we hold the UBP and while you're there you can come and see the beautiful wall being built around the Mexico border <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>